Disclosures for this and all episodes in this series can be found on the podcast series destination page located on education.webmd.com. The following presentation is copyrighted by WebMD Education. No use, broadcast, or recording of this presentation or any part thereof is permitted without the written authorization of WebMD Education. The following podcast is supported by an independent educational grant from Moderna, Inc. Hi, my name is Megan Pesch. I'm a developmental and behavioral pediatrician at the University of Michigan and the director of our congenital cytomegalovirus developmental follow-up clinic. Welcome to this podcast episode, What is Cytomegalovirus, or CMV? This is part of a six-episode podcast series called Let's Talk CMV. Today, I'm speaking with Dr. Natalie Aziz. Dr. Aziz, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your work with CMV? Of course, and thank you for having me. My name is Natalie Aziz, and I'm a clinical associate professor at the Stanford University School of Medicine. My area of specialty is maternal fetal medicine, which is also sometimes called high-risk obstetrics in the broad field of obstetrics and gynecology, as well as my other very large passion is infectious diseases and pregnancy. And through my work, I conduct research and educate patients and other healthcare providers about cytomegalovirus. And we also care for women with pregnancies that may be affected with congenital CMV infection. That's so great because I feel like a lot of people don't actually know about CMV. And it's especially important for parents or anyone who may become pregnant, anyone who is immunocompromised or has a weakened immune system. So, I mean, that's awesome that you, that's what you're doing. Um, so this episode, we can start by letting everyone know that a cytomegalovirus or CMV is a type of virus that's incredibly common in people. People will sometimes talk about it like a cold-like virus. Uh, in fact, by the age of 40, almost, well, I'd say the majority of Americans have had CMV already, um, especially young kids who are in daycare, so before they turn five. Um, so it's it's a really common virus. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about the virus, um, some details about what the exactly a virus is? Yes, and of course, I know we've been hearing a lot about viruses lately, including the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as that preceding the Zika virus, and now with monkeypox coming forward. So viruses have been found everywhere on Earth. They're extremely small organisms and only seen with a microscope, but viruses don't have everything they need to replicate or make more viruses. And therefore, in order to do so, they need to infect the cells of a host. And this includes everyone from humans to animals or even plants. And they usually attach to and enter the host's healthy cells. And oftentimes these viruses can significantly damage or kill those host cells, which they are infecting. Wow. That always just like blows my mind. It's, that's, it's so fascinating, um, but also kind of scary. Um, and with CMV especially, it's, it's one of those viruses that once you're infected, it stays in your body for a lifetime. Um, so similar to like uh, the virus that causes chicken pox, right? It can stay in your body and it can cause shingles later if it's, you know, reactivated. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I just think that's one of the really interesting things about CMV and it comes in many different types. Um, so I know we'll be talking about this in more detail, but I always think it's helpful to kind of revisit the types of CMV. So there's a primary infection, that's a first CMV infection. Then there's something called a reinfection, which we are all somewhat familiar with now because of COVID. So people can get infected again with CMV, but with a different strain. Uh, reactivation is when an earlier CMV infection that's been lying dormant in the body reactivates and becomes active again. Congenital CMV, which is um, you know, both of our focus, it's um, when a baby gets CMV before it's born, so in utero. 
And then there's perinatal or postnatal CMV when a baby gets CMV during birth or shortly thereafter, um, including, you know, from breast milk. With all these different types of CMV, I think it's important to kind of remember, and we'll get into this, that for most people, it's really not harmful. But there are certainly some circumstances, um, you know, that it can be. So if you're a fairly healthy adult, CMV will likely stay dormant or inactive in their body, or it will become active again, but you probably wouldn't even know it, right? If you have an active immune system or a healthy immune system, um, that that's the body's natural defense system, and that helps kind of fight off the virus. But, you know, if someone's immune system is weakened, um, which can happen if you're taking taking certain medications uh, during certain treatments for cancer, or um, if you're living with certain health conditions like HIV or organ or bone marrow or stem cell transplant. So if you have a weakened immune system, you can be at, at higher risk for, um, I guess, consequences or getting sick um, due to a CMV infection. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how CMV can affect someone once they're infected? Yes, of course. So most adults with a healthy immune system who become infected with primary CMV infection may not even know that they have it because they don't feel sick and they usually have few or no symptoms. Now, when symptoms do occur, they can be similar to a cold or a flu-like infection. And these symptoms include fatigue or tiredness, as well as fever, sore throat, swollen glands, and muscle aches. And an additional tip is that if you are pregnant, and you do develop a rash or have a fever or have joint or muscle aches and a sore throat or swollen glands. These are all very important symptoms that you should report to your doctor and perhaps be tested for the appropriate viruses such as cytomegalovirus. Even though cytomegalovirus is very, very common and it's all around us, it's important to keep in mind and to keep the symptoms in mind during your prenatal care so that you can be evaluated appropriately for it during your pregnancy. And while it's rare, CMV can sometimes cause complications or additional problems. For adults who have a healthy immune system, this can include an infection um, such as that with a different virus um, affecting the heart or brain or digestive systems, for example. And those people who have a weakened immune system, this can be especially important, um, including those who have organ stem cell or bone marrow transplants. CMV or cytomegalovirus can cause serious complications and can even be deadly for those individuals. Now, fortunately, this is a rare event and individuals who have weakened immune systems are aware of it. Um, so physicians and your healthcare providers are looking out for these things, but these are important things to keep in mind. Many of which the inflammation or swelling that can happen in body systems includes eyes or eyesight or vision, skin, and we can develop rashes or lesions, and the digestive system, and as well as lungs, brain, and nerves. So if you or your child have a weakened immune system, you'll want to make sure that you talk to your doctor about CMV. And Dr. Pesh, we know that congenital CMV can cause serious symptoms and complications for babies. Um, can you please elaborate a little bit on this so that we can inform our audience a very important aspect of prenatal care? So yeah, that's right. Most babies um, born with CMV um, or congenital CMV will have no symptoms at birth, but complications can happen uh, months or even years later. And the risk of developing complications is actually the highest if a mother has a primary infection. And again, that's her first CMV infection ever during those first three months of pregnancy or the first trimester. So babies who are kind of more severely affected with congenital CMV, they can have, um, well, you know, they can be born quite sick. Um, they can have to stay in the hospital for a while, have... Um, 
you know, differences in how their brains were formed, uh, have, have trouble with seeing, um, big livers, or, you know, just be really, really small babies. And, you know, that's about 10%, maybe even less of all babies with CMV. But for the biggest thing that we worry about for babies born with CMV is the risk of hearing loss. And hearing loss can be present at birth or it can develop sometime throughout childhood. Um, and I also, I should mention that we like to test newborns for CMV as soon as possible after they're born, definitely within those first three weeks. Um, and that's because later on, it's harder to tell if it was a congenital infection, which is you know something we take really seriously, or, you know, a postnatal exposure, maybe they, um, you know, got it from a kiss or breast milk, which really is generally not concerning. So um, be sure to talk to your doctor in advance about testing your baby. Thank you, Dr. Pesh. That's such an important point, that three-week time frame regarding determination of when a baby was actually infected with CNV, whether it was during pregnancy or whether it was after pregnancy. And as you mentioned, prior to pre in, in during pregnancy, it can be much more severe. And after delivery, it's fortunately much more mild and, and is just more of a routine infection. And so as we mentioned, cytomegalovirus is common among people of all ages. And one of the reasons is because it spreads so rapidly because when CMV is active, it can easily be passed to others through their blood, saliva, tears, urine, semen, feces, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. And so some of the common ways of passing it can be either through direct physical contact, such as kissing or sharing utensils or sexual activity, as well as during pregnancy or at the time of birth or after birth when a mom is breastfeeding and through blood transfusions and organ and bone marrow and stem cell transplants. So really we call cytomegalovirus the ubiquitous virus, meaning it's everywhere. It's in so many of our bodily fluids and can be passed in so many ways. Now, it's also important to know that casual contact, such as general hugging or holding hands, are very rare ways or modes of spreading CMV. So fortunately, that is not something that is commonly a cause of infection. But you can get CMV when you touch your eyes, nose, or mouth after having contact with someone else's bodily fluids that were infected with CMV. For example, through saliva or urine or feces of young children. And that's the way that many women who are pregnant may actually acquire CMV through the care of their young children or toddlers. So this is why it can be especially common among small children and people who have a lot of contact with them, including parents themselves, babysitters, child care workers, and teachers. And notably, you're also more likely to get CMV if your immune system is weakened. Right. And, you know, it's so, when you're a mom or uh, working with kids, you know, they're just slobbering all over. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's really easy to kind of transmit that if you're not careful. Um, so because CMV is so common, preventing it is going to be about ways people can help prevent the spread and, um, you know, protect themselves. So most people will get CMV eventually. So having it or becoming infected is absolutely nobody's fault. And like, there's no blame at all. But some ways that you can help prevent the spread um, include things like not kissing a toddler on the lips uh, during pregnancy, um, you know, maybe offering your cheek or forehead instead, uh, avoiding sharing foods with uh, young children or really anybody during pregnancy. Um, and that includes things, you know, like taking a lick of some your kid's ice cream cone or sharing utensils, um, making sure to wash your hands really, really well after diaper 
uh, changes, even, even urine diapers, just you got to wash your hands really, really well. Um, and then of course, like not putting objects in your mouth. Um, you know, things like, I know us moms, sometimes like your kid will drop their pacifier and you go to like clean it by like putting it in your mouth, which sounds so gross, like now that I'm saying it. But, um, you know, when someone points out that behavior as being high risk, I think it's like helpful for people to be like, oh yeah, like that's, you know, that is something that I can avoid. And I mean, I, I think it can be a bit overwhelming, and so it's just, I think, for uh, women who are uh, pregnant or trying to become pregnant, it's going to be just about trying to reduce your risk and finding what the right balance is for you, like what you can and can't do. Um, and so it's important for people to know about this, but then, um, you know, talk to their doctors about it and, and decide for themselves. Uh, we're learning more and more about CMV every day. So we just want people to be educated about it and also, you know, feel really empowered to talk to their doctors about it. Thank you for having me here today, Dr. Pesh. It's been a pleasure to join you and to talk about a very important part of pregnancy and prenatal care. A take-home message for our audience from our talk today is that if you are pregnant, cytomegalovirus or CMV is a virus that can affect pregnancy, and it's very common. CMV is a topic that physicians should include in their prenatal education and preventative care for their patients who are pregnant. We encourage you to ask your obstetric care provider about this very important part of your prenatal care. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining me. It was really helpful to have your perspective. And I agree, you know, ask your doctor, learn more about CMV. CMV is something that is really, really common. So, you know, people should just ask their doctor and know about it. So thank you again uh, for joining us today. And thank you to our listeners as well. And I hope you will tune in to future podcasts from this series.